Rachel Holt for Nesson.com. Thanks for tuning in to our fantasy football podcast. I'm joined by Adam Rank of NFL Media, and you can find Adam on Fantasy and Friends on NFL Network. He's kind of a big deal, or he's also on Twitter helping the good people of the fantasy football world out with some good insight. So, Adam, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Always the highlight of my week. Mine, too. And one of the highlights of my week was yesterday watching the game. First off, you're on the West Coast, and you wake up very early in the morning, so we'll cut you some slack on that. But, man, all of us East Coasters are tired. Everyone in the office has big bags under their eyes today. Staying up late last night watching the Cubbies win their first World Series since 1908. What were your thoughts on the game? Well, I really enjoyed it, and I'm happy. I mean, you know, anytime you see a, a long-suffering fan base, get a chance to celebrate a championship. And I think of Cleveland's uh, win in the uh, NBA finals. And of course this one, uh, but this one does have a little bit more special meaning to me because uh, I was born in Chicago. I am not a Cubs fan though. I will, I will put that out there, but uh, I do have a lot of family members who were especially family members who are no longer around to see this. And I know this was a long time coming for them and, you know, I was thinking about them, so it's hard not to get a little emotional thinking of that, and hopefully uh, hopefully they don't run out of old style up in heaven, and uh, I hope they got a chance to enjoy it. And Nesson, we're in Red Sox territory. We love an underdog, so I'm very happy for them as well. Um, on to football. We're at the halfway point of the NFL season. We'll touch on Week 9, and we'll get your thoughts about all the good stuff for this week ahead. But first, let's do a little reflecting. Many of us are kicking ourselves at this point in the fantasy football season, depending on how your team's doing. And a lot of us are thinking, if I could do it all over again, I would. It seems so simple now that we look back on it. Why didn't I pick up Melvin Gordon? Why didn't I draft Matt Forte higher? Um, First off, who has been your biggest fantasy football flop at this point in the season? Well, I think... Outside of not drafting certain players, I'm going to look at somebody who I did pick. I would start with Lamar Miller. Uh, I did something a little out of character for me because I I tend to go wide receiver heavy early in the draft and prefer to build my running backs. I think that anybody who's spent some time listening to this podcast understands that and where I'm coming from. And in one league, uh, it's actually the league where we do with the NFL fantasy people. And I, I attribute this to uh, being in a league where we're not playing for money, so I don't really care that much, but wanted to try it. But still, at the same time, it's the league we talk about on the show. But I did draft Lamar Miller, and uh, it's been terrible. I I didn't enjoy it. Um, He's been fine, but when you you draft a running back in the second round, you can't just have him be fine. So I really wish I had – well, if I was going to take a running back that early, I wish I would have just stuck to my – I was a huge – uh, Ezekiel Elliott fan coming into the draft. So I'm like, I should have just taken him. But I ended up trading for EZE. So I got him. I got rid of Lamar Miller. Unfortunately, I had to let go of Odell Beckham Jr., who's probably going to go out and have a monster season. So I think going forward, I think the lesson that I learned uh, in any league that you're doing is whatever you believe, just stick to it. It's fun to kind of veer off during the draft and everything. But that's what mock drafts are for. And so fortunately, though, the two teams that I'm, uh, let's just say I'm invested in the most, uh, I went with the, the wide receiver heavy strategy. I've got Spencer Ware in both, which right now this week is not great. But going forward in the future, uh, that's going to be fine. So, yeah, Lamar Miller is one that's going to stick with me. What about you? What's one that you really wish you could do over again? Russell Wilson is one of the quarterbacks that I drafted pretty high up there in one of my leagues, um, 27th among quarterbacks in standard scoring leagues and fantasy points this year. So a big flop for a lot of us. Not not doing too well this year. No, it's tough, but he's battling injuries, but he seems so safe. You're like, oh, this is a great one. Yeah, I'll take Russell Wilson, but yeah. Uh, I helped out. Uh, there's a there's a pitcher for the Angels who uh, I helped him do his draft prep, and he was so excited about Russell Wilson. And he's like, "I love." I'm like, "But dude, like, you want to take a quarterback that early? Yeah, Wilson's the best." You're like, "Okay," because at some point you're like, "It's your team. Draft who you want. I don't want you to not pick a player on my behest and then have him blow up or do whatever." You know, so you're like, "Okay, I'm just giving you the information." Uh, but yeah, he doesn't talk to me anymore. Like it's my <laughs> fault. Like what did I do? I try to tell you not to take him. Well, I will tell that guy that you were the one that told me to draft Spencer Ware, 
and he has completely blown up this year. So going off of that, what's your biggest fantasy football surprise, maybe as of late or just through the first half? We got guys like Jay Ajayi blowing up over the past um, three weeks, and Derek Carr is sixth at his position in fantasy points per game. He threw for over 500 yards last week. He had four touchdowns. Incredible stuff from some guys that we might not have picked uh, right away. So for you, who has been the biggest fantasy surprise in a good way? Oh, in a good way. I always think of the negative things. I always uh, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Julio Jones isn't consistent enough and OBJ hasn't been consistent enough. But uh, I'm looking at some of the surprises. I I was pretty Pretty. Uh, I thought I was okay with DeMarco Murray. I liked him. I like Spencer Ware, obviously, as you mentioned just a moment ago. I will say Melvin Gordon because I went back and forth on him so much, and for a while during the uh, during before training camp, I would think uh, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm starting to feel Melvin Gordon, and then for whatever reason, I just got off of it. I'm like, nah. I'm like, that line still has some issues. Uh, Wisconsin running backs tend to struggle, which I know is always a stupid thing to say, but, you know, the history is there. And so I kind of talked myself out of Melvin Gordon, and my, I know a couple of my colleagues, uh, Marcus Grant in particular, were really high on him. And it was one of those situations where you're like, you know, I'll let you take the risk on that one. It's fun to talk about, but I didn't really – really didn't see him emerging like this. I didn't think uh, he was going to have this big of a season. Uh, I was still, you know, drafting Danny Woodhead when possible. So it, it really, that's one that really just caught me off guard. I would like to romanticize the past and be like, no, I kind of saw it. But I think when push came, when push came to shove, I obviously didn't do it. I don't have Melvin Gordon on any team, or at least I didn't draft him on any team uh, this season. So, uh, I really can't take any sort of credit for that. So he's the one, and it's, and it's been pretty cool to watch. I, uh, I'm excited for him. Uh, I hope I hope nothing for the best for those San Diego fans. I think now that the Cubs have won, the Cavaliers won earlier this season, I think that uh, San Diego has now taken the prize for the most tortured fan base uh, although they live in San Diego, so I don't care all that much. that much. Right. We don't feel bad for them. You know, we can't feel too bad. Like, if you spend any time in San Diego, you're like, yeah, I don't care that your teams don't win. You've got you've got life by the uh, by the hand here. We were whipping out the winter boots already in October. So, no, we don't feel bad over here on the East Coast for any of you. And you're in L.A., so so shame on you for that as well. I'm wearing a hoodie, so it's pretty severe. What is it, 70 degrees out? Listen, it was 60 something today. So, I know that you're trying to be a little smart Alec, but it was it was actually it was 60 on the nose. So, we know what cold is. Well, don't catch a cold over there. We're worried about you. <laughs> Adam, as far as your second half star, who are you looking at to have a breakout um second half of the season? Well, there's a lot of encouraging things uh, as we look forward to we, uh, the second half of the season. The Steelers still have the easiest schedule uh, going forward, but as our uh, intrepid hipster, I don't know if you catch fantasy, fantasy and friends, but our one of our hipsters, Matthew, the franchise, Franciscovich, pointed out that while the Steelers have the second, like the easiest strength of schedule. Uh, they also get the Cleveland Browns twice, which is amazing. So I really like that. So I think anybody who's been waiting for Le'Veon Bell to kind of – it seems weird to say that he needs to break out, but he's had 99 touches this season, and he has not had a touchdown, which is weird because that's the, the highest total. He missed a couple of games. Um, but still, you know, get in the end zone once in a while. We need one of those patented 30-point games from him in the near future. Um, I'm excited about Odell Beckham Jr. Um, in the second half of the season, he's traditionally a lot better. Um, he averages about 125 receiving yards per game in the second half of the season, which is the not only the highest mark of anybody currently, but like when you got to go back to the 70s. Like nobody averages more points in the second half of the season than him. So if you've been hanging on to him, uh, be ready for that. But I still would like to see some of those other players just kind of start to break out. Guys like Michael Thomas, I think, is uh, is on the verge of having a huge season. 
there really can't there really isn't like a number one receiver for the Saints because Drew Brees likes to spread the ball around a little bit too much. But with Kobe Fleener being an absolute disappointment, and I don't think that that's going to rectify itself, that he's been leaning on Thomas near the red zone. So that could be very big going forward. John Brown is starting to play a lot better for the Arizona Cardinals, as is J.J. Nelson. So perhaps Carson Palmer will get back to stretching the football or stretching the field a little bit. And uh, and I'm looking at the the Eagles situation at the at the running back. Uh, the, it seems like they don't have faith in Ryan Matthews because any time a coach comes out and says we love this player, it's like okay, he's in the doghouse. Um, <laughs> so I don't believe in Ryan Matthews. I know that they ran Darren Sproles 15 times last week, but they can't do that. Just look at like Jaquiz Rogers, like a very like a, a similar type of running back. Like you can't give those guys the pounding week in and week out. So I'm looking at Wendell Smallwood as somebody who has a potential second-half breakout player. Um, I think he could have a lot of value. So if he's available on your waiver wire and you got some space, if you're carrying an extra tight end you don't need or you've been rolling with two defenses and can finally get rid of one of those and, and stuff like that, he's somebody that I would take a look at. I'm not saying that you play him this week, but just have him on your bench. He could prove to be valuable down the stretch here. Hold on to him. Okay, good stuff from the first half. And now we're on to the second half, and a lot of people are making playoff pushes. If you're like me, you really can't afford to lose another game in one of your leagues. So let's get into week nine here. There's six teams on buys again. The Bears, Bengals, Cardinals, Redskins, Texans, and, of course, the Patriots. And, um, by the way, Adam, it's a bye week for the Patriots. But they dropped this bombshell on us that Jamie Collins has been traded to the Cleveland Browns of all places, arguably their best defensive player. And there he goes, getting shipped off to Cleveland. It's funny, though. People were confused about a day. And then uh, everyone just trusts Bill Belichick so much that they were just justifying it from this point forward and accepting it. He can really do no wrong around here. It's incredible. Boys have been winning for like 25 consecutive years. So I think he's, I think he's earned that. And every time he trades away a player like Chandler Jones or anybody when he traded – uh, the offensive lineman of the Buccaneers a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was the year you guys – what season was that? But but I know, like, every time he makes a move, you for a while it was like, well, this is it. You can't keep trading away your periphery players. It's eventually going to catch up to you. Uh, it's not. You're the best team in the league. Um, they were the best team in the league last year, and if it was really – if it was one, one muffed punt in Denver, cost us the whole thing. Not only did it cost us the whole thing, it gave Peyton Manning another Super Bowl title, which is awful. Now all the Peyton truthers are running around, like, he's got two Super Bowls. I'm like, he was on two Super Bowl teams. He didn't win Super Bowls. He's not Tom Brady. There isn't there isn't been a, 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 a Patriots Super Bowl that you looked at where Tom Brady didn't play amazing, you know? Right. Uh, like Ben Roethlisberger's first Super Bowl, he was a, he was a spectator. Um Manning's two Super Bowls, he's been a spectator. So anybody who he gets compared to, uh, Tom Brady's been legit in all of them. And I'm, I, just want, I just want Tom to go, listen, this is tough as a Bears fan to say. Actually, it's not, because what do I care? We're not rivals. <laughs> um, now, I expect the Bears to make a miracle run and finish tennis sticks and make the playoffs and everything. So I'll get that out of the way. But let's say that they, they might not make the Super Bowl. I think I'm comfortable in saying that, the Bears have an uphill climb to the Super Bowl. So my next best thing would just be for Tom Brady to go out and win it and then just be like, shut up, everybody, forever. He's the GOAT. He's the best. There's no argument. It's over. I don't ever want to hear anything about it ever again. We'll just accept it, and we'll move on with our lives. It would be just like Tom Hanks is the best actor. Like it would just be that, that assumed, although that's a bad example because somebody might say Bill Murray. So I don't know. But Tom Brady will be number one. That's what I want. That's what I demand of you, New England fans. So don't worry about Jamie Collins. I feel bad for him. I understand going from the Patriots to the Browns would be akin to going from a Rolls Royce to a toaster. But you know what? It is, <laughs> it is what it is, and uh, it, you guys are going to win, and it's not going to matter. And uh, just, just roll with it. I imagine a lot of people nodding their heads in agreement right now. Um, I, I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that. You mentioned um, Big Ben, who is expected to go this week despite his knee injury. That I think he was supposed to be out for, what, six weeks? And he's only been out two weeks? This guy is not human. What is that? So is this good news for Steelers owners? And, and would you have any qualms about 
putting Ben Roethlisberger on your starting lineup this week? I certainly wouldn't play Ben Roethlisberger. If you look at uh, his history, he does a great job of returning early from injuries. Very admirable of him. Uh, but in those games that he returned from injuries, he's 2-5. and five. So he, he's had nine touchdowns with ten interceptions in those games. So I would avoid playing him. And the Ravens' defense is pretty good this season. Uh, the rivalry is pretty contested. Uh, I would feel comfortable going with Le'Veon Bell because he's – uh, he's the, you know, probably the best, it's tough to say he's the best running back in the game, but he does so many different things. He's involved in the passing game and the running game. He's got a pretty safe floor. So even if the Ravens defense does step up this week, he should still go out and get double digit points. I'm also bullish on Antonio Brown. He's been okay against the Ravens. He had one monster game against them in 2014 when Jimmy Smith was out, but even going against Jimmy Smith in the first game, he had like 90 yards. So uh, if he could go out and get the, I think he could get double digit points. I don't think that that's, um, that's too, too unrealistic. I guess I should say, I didn't say on the air yesterday, I was like, Oh, he's going to have a monster game. And then I kind of thought about it and I'm like, well, eh, maybe not monster. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. And then some kid hit me up on Twitter. I'm like, yes, I know what I said. <laughs> um, you know what it is. I, it's good to have people double check you like that. So I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. I got double digits. It's fair. I think. Uh, hey, people have said um, people have said worse things on air than that. So I think you're doing okay for yourself. <laughs> it happens, right? So, uh, so I would feel comfortable with those two guys. I would avoid the rest. I know, uh, man. One of my friends was hitting me up yesterday because he wants to throw Eli Rogers into his into his lineup, and I'm like, dude. I'm like, I trust the two stars, but the other guys, I'd probably stay away from. We mentioned Spencer Ware earlier. He's been your guy from the get-go. If you took him and you listened to this podcast, then you're very happy with Adam, um, and you deserve to give him some credit here. But unfortunately, he is in concussion protocol and is doubtful if he will play this week. So who is his replacement? Well, Charkandrick West was the guy, and I'm a little remiss in that. I never I never picked him up. I I look at Wes and I, I see him and I'm like, ah, he's not as good as Spencer Ware. I think one of the reasons that we really liked him was that even with Jamal Charles looming there, we figured, uh, well, Ware's still going to have a role on this team because he catches the ball well out of the backfield. He was going to be the goal line back. So there was really no no need to like kind of handcuff him or anything. And when Jamal Charles went out for the year, that should have been – that should have been my cue to go, you know, handcuff him with Charkandrick West just in case. But gosh, he was running so well, man, and it just it it, it didn't look like he was going to have any problems, you know, being that that bell cow running back. But unfortunately, he is on concussion protocol. Probably not going to play this week. So if you were able to pick up West, and I got him in absolutely no leagues, so that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> so I'm missing out on that. Hopefully, you have somebody on your bench you can sub in. I think. Um, you know, if you have you, whoever it is, Sproles, Theo Riddick, or anybody like that, um, somebody who you might be able to pick up on your waiver wire right now would be C.J. Procyce. Uh He had a little, he had a nice little game last week. Um, was playing well as a receiver out of the backfield, doing a number of different things. He was on the field for 43% of the snaps, so he's starting to kind of get a bigger role in, in, in the lineup. And so I would look for him. If he's available, I know some smart Alec, again, on Twitter, like, oh, you picked him up a week ago. And you're like, all right, congratulations. You knew to pick him up. I, I don't know what to tell you. But I know looking at NFL.com leagues and Yahoo leagues that he's still available in a large, large percentage of them. So if he's available, I would go pick him up. Otherwise, uh, you're in trouble. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, he would be my first choice. And then after that, you know, I would have to take it on a case-by-case basis. But – um, you can even play Antoine Smith on Thursday night if you're listening to this in time. That's the problem is that there's two prime candidates on uh, on Thursday night to go pick up and play, but they're all they're all going to be gone. And Theron Ward and stuff like that. You're like, oh, why why do you have to play these <laughs> Thursday night games? Like play them on Saturday. It would be fun, but whatever. At least we don't have a London game this week. We don't have to set our lineups super early. I know you were up at 6 a.m. the last week setting your lineups. So you, speaking of London, you said you were in a game with people just from England, and yeah. Tarkandrick West is not available in that league. Like, they know to pick him up. Oh, they're savvy. They're, uh, it's an eight-man t- eight league. It's my first year doing it. 
And uh, the one thing that I learned from these kids, and it, it's been a pretty cool experience, um, is that they all went super running back heavy, and, like, there is no – no running backs available, and it's one of those things where I did my my stupid not stupid, but I did my zero RB thing, and I'm like, man, I can only play three of these guys. Like, what am I thinking? Because it's an 18 league, which means there's always going to be dudes available on the waiver wire at the wide receiver position because there's just so many of them, and uh, it's hard to find a replacement running back. I was rolling uh, I was rolling Devonte Booker and Spencer Ware, and now I'm like, oh my gosh. And in an eight-team league, I'm gonna to have to start CJ Pro size. Actually, I might have Kenny Dixon in that one. But these guys are great, and uh, I know I know people talk about eight-team leagues like kind of a um, kind of a like dismissive, like ugh, whatever eight teams. But I'll tell you something right now: it's harder because when you play in twelve and fourteen-team leagues. You really don't have much, many lineup choices. You're like, yeah, like these are my players. Like I don't have a, a hard decision. But when you're doing it and you've got to pick between, you can only start two receivers, and you got to pick between like uh, Antonio Brown, Des Bryant, T.Y. Hilton, or Dante Moncrief, and try to figure that out. That's actually tougher, and that takes more acumen, I think. You kick, you kick yourself, yourself more at the end, end of the week. week oh my gosh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, as far as matchups go this week, I know I've been long out of my Survivor League, but let's try to help some people out who still might be in theirs. If you've just been going after the team that's playing the Browns, well, they're taking on the Dallas Cowboys this week, and you probably already use them. So is there any team or matchup that you're eyeing this week, Adam? Yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, Dallas would be the obvious one. I'm trying to think, though. I think Looking back at what we were doing, like Dallas might have survived this long because, again, if you're playing the going against the Browns thing, this is the first time the Cowboys are obviously playing the Browns this season. So you could have them as a possibility. Um, I like Kansas City a lot against Jacksonville, but I know that I had already mentioned them a couple of weeks ago uh, for anybody who was out there playing. So there was that one. Uh, I know a lot of people lost last week because they took the Minnesota Vikings. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry for you. Uh, I'm glad you lost. Uh, the Saints would be a pretty decent one going up against the 49ers. It seems to be getting a little bit easier. There's a little bit more separation, and we can kind of see uh, which way these teams are headed and everything like that. Um, I would – you know what, though? I would say if for some reason – the uh, the Steelers are unable to go with Ben Roethlisberger. This would be the week to pick the Ravens. That would be pretty. That would be a pretty saucy pick. I think Miami is interesting. I think my I'm interested to see how Miami reacts coming off the bye week because uh, we've seen a couple of teams go into their bye weeks looking pretty strong. I think Minnesota, Philadelphia, you know, and then they hit that bye week, and because of the way that the new labor laws are in in the NFL. There's not as much practice time, so these teams come out flat after the bye week instead of being like, hey, we've got our stuff together. So I'm interested to see which way Miami goes because, of course, Jay Ajayi was coming off back-to-back 200-yard games, which has been done just four times in the NFL. Nobody, I'll tell you this, though, nobody's done it three times, so it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but you know who came close? Like, O.J. Simpson went back-to-back 200-yard games, and in the third game, he rushed for 171 yards. Uh, that's pretty incredible. That's, yeah. that's like that's a lot of yards. And I'm thinking of, like, the fantasy points of that. You're like, oh, man, that would have been sweet. Uh, so I don't think we've helped anybody with any pick. I guess Dallas, Kansas City, if you haven't used them. And uh, let's do a saucy one. Let's, let's go crazy. And I'm going to say – Oh, I really – you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say San Diego wins this week. Wow. Who are they playing? They're playing the Titans. Titans. It's an interesting game because Marcus Mariota does play so much better on the road. Uh, and another amazing thing about Mariota, and now we're going to jinx it here, is that uh, he's never thrown an interception in the red zone, which is incredible to me. I don't know. Yeah. That just stuck out – I don't know. I thought that was interesting. I'm sorry, Rachel. I'm sorry if that – if that bothered you, geez. when you have Tom Brady uh, who hasn't thrown an interception all season, nothing, nothing stands oh, out to you as being impressive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You're you're now the person that walks up to the bar trying to stump the bartender with a shot he's never heard of. Okay, I get it. That's 
That's a weird example, but I awfully specific, but I, okay. See, the Tom joke's Tom on Tom you because I am a Coors Light kind of girl, and I, I'm offended by that. <laughs> Riz, you live, you live in Boston. I'm assuming that they have a pretty nice uh, craft beer selection for you. No, we're all about the Budweiser, and we love it. We're, we're Bud people. We do Coors Light occasionally, but um. Okay, well, listen. I, I guess I'm. I, I guess I'm the guy then who shows up at the bar and is like, "Uh, do you have the Sculpin Grapefruit IPA?" And when they say no, I just walk out. <laughs> like, how dare you? Well, you're the fancy LA guy, so we're not really surprised I, by that. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you what my pizza order would be. You'd all be ashamed. What What is it? Pizza. I'm just saying that Holler. there might or might not be jalapenos on it. I'm just. I'll know, just that throw that out good. there. And that's that it. sounds good. Well, uh, while we're bashing you over here, we're still uh, <laughs> interested in picking your brain. And my last question for you, any more hot takes, any other things that we should keep our eye on that, that you haven't mentioned already? Uh, I do want to – I think I, I stump a lot for Matthew Stafford. Um, I think that he's he's got a toughish matchup this week against the Vikings, but I think that, again, he's played well enough this season that I'm still going to go with him. I know Marvin Jones – uh, a lot of people are, are a little disappointed in him, but realize that his production is going to get back to where we, we had it earlier in the season. Uh, the one thing is that his role has never changed, and he's the guy who stretches the field for that team. Golden Tate had a couple of nice weeks in the sun because Theo Riddick was hurt and Derek Ebron was hurt. But now that those two guys are back, they're going into that role of, like, that's the dump-off pass guy. Marvin Jones is who they force it to a lot when they want to go downfield. So I think that he can come back at some point. Uh, Blake Bortles, I know that he's been much maligned uh, for how awful he has looked. But when you when you take a gander at the figures, uh, you notice very similar statistics to what he was doing last year. So garbage time points still count. Um, I hope Allen. I think Allen Robinson's going to turn it around soon because he's still getting targeted a ton. And a player of his caliber cannot be targeted that, that much and not come through. So it's been a rough couple of weeks, and you've had to wear it for a while. But I think ultimately he's uh, he's going to come through, and he's going to be good for you. And uh, that's pretty much it. And, I, and you already ruined my Mariota thing, so I don't even want to talk about <laughs> it. It's hard to get excited about anything if you're a Patriots fan. That's the one know, the yeah. one bad thing about just winning all the time. I'm sorry. But someone out there was excited about that. <laughs> There's got to be somebody. Yeah, you're so I forget, I forget how I, – I don't think jaded is the word. I think spoiled. I, I feel, you guys are so spoiled. It's, it's, listen, I know the feeling. You know? There's no, one I, Oregon fan I, clapping for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I know what it's like. I know uh, like when uh, everybody was celebrating the, uh, the Warriors. Talking about how great. I'm like, oh, that was, oh, you guys won one championship in a row. That must have been super fun. Uh, <laughs> unless it's three in a row like the Lakers always do. you're a Lakers guy. It, it, then it really doesn't, it really doesn't register with me. See, oh, everyone's on board. You you praise Tom Brady, and then you got to go and tell him you're a Lakers fan, and now they turn on you again. It's just, you can't win with I all the teams you root for. <laughs> I can't let them love me too much. Right. But that's how that. But listen, that's how you have to know that my 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 sincerity for Tom Brady is true. Because for me to say such nice things, and you got to th- figure, uh, as a young man, uh, the Celtics and Lakers had a, had a little bit of a rivalry. You guys beat us with Paul Pierce uh, that season. Uh, the 2000s were marred by the Red Sox constantly eliminating the Angels. So. <laughs> for me to step up and be so effusive in my praise for Tom Brady, it shows that it really means a lot to me. And I might be the biggest Tom Brady fan in the world if you consider all the factors that are working against me. Well, we note that and we appreciate that. <laughs> um, Adam, one last thing. Where can we find you on Fantasy and Friends? Uh, yeah, Fantasy and Friends will be coming at you on Friday night at 6 p.m. your time. Uh, if you got a break between Bruins and Celtics coverage, uh, give us a give us a look, see how it goes, or at the very least, just DVR us because it's it's a fun show. I think if anybody uh, watches it one time, you'll become hooked. You'll uh, really get drawn in. We try to do uh, try to uh, try to involve as many people 
as possible. We always seem to have such great Skypers from the New England area, too. So that's that's always been a bonus for us. And if not, even people from Florida who Skype in end up being Patriots fans anyway. So it's all good. Um, and also, uh, after the show uh, at 7 o'clock, uh, I'll be taking over the NFL Fantasy Twitter handle, doing a little thing called Grade My Trade. Uh, so if you've been doing some trades or you're thinking of offering a trade in your leagues and you want me to take a look at it, uh, it's a little after show, so we'll be doing it you know, immediately after Fantasy and Friends at 7 o'clock on the NFL Fantasy Live Twitter handle. Uh, if you mention, you mention Nesson, and then I'll, I'll try to get your answer up to the top. Um, but that's it, and that's where you can find me. I try to answer your Twitter questions as much as possible. But, you know, I have a small child, so it gets tougher and tougher. But I try – and uh, actually, the easiest way, go to Facebook.com slash Adam Rank and send me a direct message, and then I can usually get those easier. But that's that's the pro tip that I don't give to everybody. I don't know where you find the time of the day to do this stuff, but uh, we appreciate it. And thanks again for your time. You're the man. <laughs>